Bismillah, Alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam ala Rasulullah, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I hope my brothers and sisters, I hope you guys are doing good. Uh, may Allah increase you in health, wealth, and make things easy for you, keep you firm and steadfast on his deen until we meet him. Ameen. Uh, just a reminder, and this reminders, I'll be doing them, inshallah, whenever I get the chance. So, uh, and if this is also something which uh, would be beneficial, then I pray that I keep it up whenever I have the chance to. So I pray that Allah makes this uh, beneficial. So, today, something, you know, kind of like shocking happened. Was it shocking or something? Well, it's an eye-opener, but a reminder. Uh, which uh, one of my, you know, good friends, he, you know, he he made a mistake. And I just wanted us to learn from this mistake. And um, the mistake he made was, the thing is, he has been making dua for a long time. Let's say for like uh, 20 years now. So, he has been making dua for a long time. And... So it now got to a point where he now, you know, he opened his mouth and he said something. He said that um, I've been making dua for over 20 years and the dua has not been answered. So Allah has not answered my dua. So subhanallah. Uh, this statement which he made was, was a mistake. It was a big mistake and may Allah forgive him. And I'm sure uh, now he would have rectified uh because I actually told him about it. So, inshallah, uh, we're going to go through this, uh, why this is a mistake. So, this is a mistake because, first of all, let me first by saying, let me first start by saying that the default is that Allah answers uh, all du'as, except for, some conditions which uh, I would not be able to go through. We have to do a very bigger room for that. But one of the conditions that make du'as not to be accepted is sin. But now let's look at this. Uh, let's look at this hadith now. So the Prophet wasalam, said that any Muslim who makes du'a, a supplication that does not involve a sin. Or breaking ties of kinship, Allah gives him one of three things. Either his dua is granted immediately in this world, or it is kept for him in the hereafter, or he repels from him an evil equivalent to that which he supplicated for. SubhanAllah. Then the companions, they now said, In this case, we will pray much. And the Prophet, alayhi salatu salam, he now said, Allah is more plentiful in responding. So subhanallah. So now, let's look at this hadith now. Let's break it down. Prophet ﷺ now said, Any Muslim who makes dua that does not involve a sin. So you can see here that sin is one of the foremost things that stops a dua from being answered. You know, you're collecting that riba, you're listening to music, free mixing, doing stuff lying, cheating, stuff like that. And then breaking ties of kinship, which is another big, huge, major sin. It's kind of, uh, there's even a hadith of, which talks about the hellfire for those who severe ties of kinship. So breaking ties with your mom, dad, any family member, you're not calling them, not keeping in touch with them. You just arrogantly you want to stay away from them. So this is another dangerous thing that makes dua not to be accepted. And then, you know, when you're forming a bond, when you're getting close to your kin, to your kindred, you know, you're, you're, you're keeping your kinship very tight, then it's now even, there's a hadith which says that Allah would now increase your provision by doing that. So now, the Prophet Alayhi Salaam now said these two things, which is sins and breaking sides of kinship. So, the Prophet Alayhi Salaam is saying that if you do not, if this dua does not accompany these two evils, breaking ties of kinship and other sins, then Allah would now give the person, the one who is supplicating, making this dua, Allah will give him 
one of three things. So these are the three outcomes of making a dua. And that's why we say that Allah by default answers duas until you go and you try to analyze uh, where duas are not answered. So now, these are the three outcomes. So the first outcome is either his dua is granted immediately in this world. So it's either it's granted immediately in this world. Then number two, it is kept for him for the hereafter. So it is kept for him for the next world. And then number three, Allah repels it, repels from him an evil. That's you're supplicating for something, but uh, the evil, there, there's an evil in that. There's an evil in the way. So Allah now repels from you an evil equivalent to that which you supplicated for. So you were supplicating for something, but it was bad for you. So Allah now repels that bad, that evil, so you don't come near it. So, these are the three outcomes of which the du'as are answered when it does not involve a sin and the severing of kinship ties. So, subhanallah. Now, look at where someone's iman is meant to increase and not give up from making du'a. The sahaba, the companions, they now said, in this case, we will pray much. They did not say that they are going to be tired they already have seen the outcomes, they've seen the reward, they've seen the good that would come out for them, you know, supplicating because now they know that their du'as will be answered in three outcomes. So it's either one of these three. So they now replied by saying, we will keep on praying, we will pray much, we'll keep on making du'a. And of course, Allah loves those who make du'a, loves those who supplicate uh, to him and those who trust him. And Allah is displeased with the one who does not supplicate to him, that does not uh, beg him for something so that's another way of pride now you can see that the companions have given us the blueprint on what to do to keep on praying keep on making that dua till you leave this earth keep on doing it don't ever allow shaitan to say to whisper to you that your dua was not answered don't ever allow that it is answered just keep on doing it and if you uh, if you, if Allah grants you Jannah, inshallah, and you see the reward, if your dua was kept in Jannah, and you see it, you would even wish that Allah did not, <laughs> you would wish that there was nothing that uh, was answered on earth, or like it, the, the the answer did not reflect on earth, but it was but reserved for you more in Jannah. That's you keep on making dua, and you don't see any reflection of that dua on earth, but that Allah would keep on increasing uh in the reward in Jannah. You would wish you would wish more. You would wish that Allah did not even <laughs> the so called respond to your dua on earth, whereas uh, he, he responded to it. So, this is something that we should uh, be reminded that we shouldn't give up on dua. So, it's a huge mistake to say that um, you've been making dua and it was not answered because of this hadith. So this is the hadith here, which uh, you know, it is it is a hadith. It's a it's a hadith which we should ponder, and this is the hadith which you know nullifies uh, you making that statement of you know saying you've been making du'a and Allah did not answer. So the Prophet والسلام, he said, and this was uh, narrated from uh, this was Abu Huraira. That the supplication of any one of you is answered as long as he does not say, I supplicated, but my supplication was not answered. Subhanallah. I repeat, the Prophet ﷺ said that the supplication of any one of you is answered as long as he does not say, I supplicated, but my supplication was not answered. This is from Sayyid al-Bukhari and Muslim. So the scholars, they said on this hadith that it means that he gets, you know, he gets bored and he stops supplicating or you know, he feels that his supplication is taking too long to be answered. So this is something that is dangerous and it, it may earn the displeasure of Allah. May Allah protect us from that. So do not say that. Do not say what the Prophet is talking about, that I supplicated, but my supplication was not answered. Do not say that. Refrain from saying things like that. Uh, don't give up on your Lord. Don't give up. Keep on making lots of dua and uh, 
refrain from saying something which you would regret uh, later. May Allah forgive all of us uh, who make blunders with our tongue, who, you know, who make a slip of tongue uh, here and there. Because it's, it's inevitable. I make slips of tongue myself. May Allah forgive me. May Allah keep us rectified and rectified the rest of the ummah. Amin. So, uh, Subhanaka Allahumma wa bihamdik wa ashhadu an la ilaha illa anta wa astaghfiruka wa atubu ilaik. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.